These Introduction to eEdge videos for new agents are meant to give you a very quick guide to getting started with eEdge. For more in-depth training, you'll want to attend the regular group training sessions on eEdge that we offer at our office. You can also find lots of help pages for eEdge on our office's tech website that you can work through on your own. At the top middle of the MyKW homepage is your eEdge control panel. The eEdge control panel consists of My Leads, My Contacts, My Marketing, My Email, My Transactions, also called Dot Loop, and My Action Plans. Most of your business will be managed from this panel. The first section of eEdge that we'll look at is My Contacts and the three ways to add contacts to your database. eEdge's My Contacts section functions as your contact and lead database. Any contacts that you currently know, such as friends, family, current and past co-workers, former business contacts, or former clients from any previous real estate experience, should go into your My Contacts database. If eEdge were a car, Contacts would be its fuel. The marketing features of eEdge, such as your 8x8 and 33 touch marketing campaigns, all require you to have contacts in your database to work. And your eEdge website will automatically place new leads into your My Contacts database. Before you start adding contacts, you should consider the groups that you'll want to organize your contacts into. Setting up groups now means you'll be able to place your contacts into them as you begin adding contacts. Groups allow you to quickly add contacts to marketing campaigns and to market differently to each group. You can add an entire group to a campaign in fewer clicks rather than going through your entire database and clicking individual people. To manage your groups, click View Contacts under My Contacts. You'll be taken to your contact database. From there, place your mouse over the Contacts tab at the top of the page. Then select Manage Groups. You can see that I have a lot of groups set up. You'll want to set up a lot too. You can have up to 50 groups. But for now, just try adding one group for family and another for friends. Type family in the Create New Groups field. Click Save. Then do the same for friends. For more suggestions on what groups you should set up, you can visit the My Contacts help page on our office's tech website or attend a My Contacts training session. Once you have some groups set up, you can begin adding contacts. There are three ways of adding contacts to your database, so here's a quick overview of them. The first method is to add contacts manually, one at a time. This is a fairly slow method, but it's also the easiest. It's best for adding 1 to 10 or possibly up to 20 contacts at a time. To add contacts manually, click the plus button next to My Contacts. Then click Add New Contacts. The page that follows is a form for you to fill out with information about your contact. For eEdge to accept a contact, three pieces of information must be present a first name, a last name, and either an email address or a physical address or both. Because eEdge is a marketing platform, it needs a way to contact your contacts. So every contact will need an email address or a physical address for postal mailings. If you have any information for a contact in addition to a name and email address, you'll want to enter as much of it as possible in the other fields on this page. The more information you enter, the better you can leverage your database search as it grows in size. 
You'll also see status and type on this page. You should make a habit of assigning status and type to your contacts early on. Again, as your database grows in size, you can use this information to more easily and powerfully search your database. Under status, you'll see lead, retry, active, inactive, hot, sold, and trash. If you're adding someone you haven't talked to in a while, you might assign them the retry status as a reminder that you need to call that person, even if it's just to introduce your move into real estate with Keller Williams. If you're adding a client who you are currently working with, you will probably want to assign him or her the active or even hot status depending on their time frame. Speaking of time frame, there's a field for that too. You'll want to assign your contacts a type as well. This can be buyer, seller, buyer and seller, investors, vendors, and other agents, etc. By assigning a type to your contacts, you can show just these types in your database and mark it especially to them or send an email to only that segment. Again, starting with good organizational habits now will pay off as your database grows larger and larger. Once you've entered all of the information for your contact, scroll down to the bottom of the new contact form. Before you click Save, notice the checkbox that says click here to send welcome email to this contact. Anytime you add a contact with an email address to your database, that person can log in to your eEdge website with their email address and a password generated by eEdge. If you leave this box unchecked, you are simply adding this contact to your database and he or she will not know it. If, however, you would like to add this contact and send that person an email with their password and link to your eEdge website but for them to log in with, check this box. For instance, if you meet someone at an open house and you let them know that they can browse the MLS on your website, you can enter their information after the open house, then check this box to send them an, an email letting them know that they're ready to log in and browse the MLS. If you just need to add this person without them knowing, leave the box unchecked. Finally, click Save. On the following page, you'll see a notification that the contact was successfully added. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see that you can add this contact to any marketing campaigns or any groups that you've already set up. The second method for adding contacts is a little more involved but works best for adding 20 to 5,000 contacts at a time. This is the import from CSV function. If you plan on importing your contacts from a phone or if you're bringing contacts from another database or previous real estate experience, this will likely be the method that you want to use. To find where you'll need to import your contacts from a CSV file, click View Contacts under My Contacts. From your database page, place your mouse over the Contacts tab. Then click Import Export. On this page, you'll see the option to import from a custom CSV file. Under there, you'll see all of the fields that can be in the CSV file and the order that they should be in. There are a lot of fields and you probably won't need most of them. It's not recommended that you use the CSV file that is provided on this page. Instead, go to our office's tech website. You can download a simplified CSV template from our website that is guaranteed to work and it's available in multiple locations on the website. For now, 
you can go to New Agents at the top of the page. And on that page, you'll see a link to an eEdge My Contacts CSV import template. Click to open the file. You can save the file or open it in Microsoft Excel or Apple Numbers. The file will always be here for you to get a fresh copy if you need one. Once you open the file in your spreadsheet program, you can see that there is some sample information already in it. You can delete everything from the second row down, but do not delete or modify anything in the first row. If anything is changed in the first row, the import may not work. You can add columns to the first row if you know what you're doing, but you're probably best just leaving them alone for now. You can add contacts and their information down the rows, and you can save this file and come back to it later if you're not ready to upload it. If you want to upload just a few contacts, you can do that too. You can start another CSV file for the rest of your contacts later. Whether you do it all at once or piece by piece is up to you. When you're ready to upload your CSV file, go back to the Import Export page. You'll see that you can assign a group to the contacts you are about to import. You should know that this group will be assigned to all of the contacts in the CSV file. So if you want to assign the contacts in your CSV file to the family group, you'll need a separate CSV file for your family members and assign them to the family group when you upload them. Similarly, if you're uploading friends, they'll need to be in a separate CSV file and assigned to the friends group when they are uploaded. The same thing goes for status and type. You can always assign groups, status, and type after the contacts are imported though. Finally, click the browse button and navigate to the CSV file that you want to upload. Select it, then click import. The job will appear in the imported jobs section while it is being processed. This can take five or ten minutes depending on the amount of contacts in the file. Once the processing is complete, it will be marked as such under the imported job section. Any contacts that failed to import can be reviewed, then retried with another upload. The final way to add contacts to your database is through lead capture via your eEdge website. Visitors to your site will be able to browse the entire MLS. If the visitor has not registered on your website, he or she will only be able allowed one full listing view. Upon attempting to view a second listing, the visitor will be required to register in order to continue viewing listings. This is the lead capture feature of your website. If the visitor registers on your site by entering their first name, last name, and email address, you will receive a text message and or an email alert and the lead will be added to your My Contacts database, as well as the My Leads section of eEdge. Note that notifications will not occur until you've set up this portion of your eEdge website.